Yeah. This is definitely gonna dominate. Definitely gotta post this list in the description. Oh! Stack Spec, Schoolface MTG. So today is gonna be a different kind of a video. I know everybody's used to seeing the arena gameplay and me playing crazy decks and doing crazy things, and I'm still doing that, still doing that, don't worry. But I've been looking for ways to engage my subscribers more. So um, I noticed I was, I've been getting a lot of questions lately. I've been getting direct messages on Facebook. I've been getting emails. I even get text messages sometimes from friends that want to ask me stuff about the game. So I figured since so many people want to know what the stacks think, that'd be a cool thing for a video series. So yeah, I'm going to start doing this. This is going to be the what the stacks think video series. So I figured no better place to start off with than the notorious topic in the MTG community, net decking versus homebrew. So I got an email from somebody and, and he was saying how, you know, he appreciates me for playing all these original decks and, you know, how he hates, you know, seeing meta decks and how so many content creators just play, you know, meta decks. And, and um, he appreciates me bringing something different to the community, playing original decks and showing that you can do well playing original decks. And that's all fine and cool and everything. But then he went to a different path in the email. I'm not going to mention this person's name because that's irrelevant. But the guy, he started talking about, you know, how basically net deckers are the scum of the earth and how he hates meta decks and how net deckers are polluting the mtg community and just creating a horrible experience for everybody so i just want to start off by saying i don't discriminate against either side net deckers or homebrew i play net decks i play homebrew so i don't want my impression in the magic community to be that oh stacks is against net deckers i don't want people to think that i'm trying to lead some homebrew train that's just all against net deckers like oh are you filthy net deckers ah kill them all stupid net deckers ah, i can't stand you guys no that's not my stance at all i thought that that would be a good topic for my first what the stacks think video so yeah let's dive into this topic then so net decking versus homebrewing what the stacks think right so net deck you don't know what it is let me give you a brief rundown so it's basically when somebody takes a deck that they find online and somebody else plays it could be just a normal player or a pro or something they copy that list and then they go and play that deck they don't invest any thought into it they don't invest any uh any of the brewing experience any of the testing they just basically copy that person's work they copy that deck and then they go play it a lot of people have an issue with this because they think that is unoriginal it promotes unoriginality in the mtg community it makes for stale gameplay because people just copy the top tier decks and everybody ends up playing the same usually you know three to five same decks but my thing about it is it's inevitable and you really can't get around it but i don't have an issue with it and i'm going to explain why so i guess first we need to establish why do people net deck so there's many different reasons why a person would net deck so homebrewing it takes a certain mental capacity it takes a certain um ability to invest thought process into making a homebrew or at least a successful homebrew anyway and a lot of people either don't have the mental capacity or maybe they have it and they just don't have the time um or maybe they just you know don't feel like doing it whatsoever they don't want to invest the time in making their own deck so what easier way than to go and to pull the deck from online and just build that and then go out and start playing. You bypass that whole process of trying to assemble something competitive and just take something that's already competitive and go play it. A lot of people aren't really good at homebrewing. They're, just because you aren't good at homebrewing doesn't mean you are a bad magic player. It just means that that whole homebrewing process is very difficult. It's very hard to get it right. Um, a lot of people are good at piloting, but a lot of people aren't good at homebrew. And you also have to keep in mind that a lot of people who play net decks, they are competing. They want to compete at a high level. And the greatest resource that you have when competing at a high level is information. So net decks, they already have a wealth of information and resources already put into them. People have already put in a lot of brain work. They put in a lot of testing. They've invested a lot of resources into it um time energy mental thinking um brainstorming uh tweaking all of that has gone into pushing that net deck into the top tier that makes it to the point the way it's a top tier deck and everybody wants to copy it so if you want to compete at the highest level then your easiest way of doing so is just to take what's already been tested tried and proven copy that and just become efficient at piloting it and excel on and try to compete to win and yeah, a lot of people have a problem with that because they're like oh well you're just copying somebody else's work you're being unoriginal you're stealing you know that's not really the case i mean you have to keep in mind that especially in the standard format where the card pool is so small you're operating with very limited resources card wise so it's not going to take 
a lot of people to figure out what are the top cards in the meta at the time and assemble the top deck. So it doesn't take long for people to figure that out. I mean, you're talking about millions of players dealing with a very small pool of cards. So it doesn't take long for people to figure out what are the best cards and that's going to create the best deck. So yeah, why wouldn't you copy a top tier list and just go and practice and get reps in and, and prepare for the tournament and go and try to do your best? So I think as a home brewer, I don't really have a problem with this. I don't have a problem with net deckers because very specific reasons. If a person is net decking, then I should be doing my meta research. If I'm doing my meta research and I know what the hot decks are, I know what, where the meta is, what the meta is doing, I know what other people are playing, there's only going to be a very small group of top tier lists in the top decks um, for meta decks, for net decks. So me as a competent home brewer, I actually have the advantage because now I know what my opponent is playing. If he's playing one of those top tier decks, I know what's in his deck. I know that list. I know what his options are. I know what he's trying to do. So the advantage is mine. Me as a home brewer showing up with an original competently built deck, the net decker doesn't know what it is I'm playing. He doesn't know what it is I'm trying to do. So actually I have the advantage. So I think home brewers, they probably, a lot of them get upset because they, um, they build decks that aren't really that good. So they end up losing and nine times out of 10 at high level competition, they end up losing to a net deck and then they think it's the net decker's fault because they're just like, oh, you stupid net decker. You're just copying somebody else's work. You're unoriginal, blah, blah, blah. But it is not the net decker's fault. It is your fault because you know what? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the glasses off when I say this, you know, Teferi, Teferi cut the music. Teferi. Sorry, I'm late. Yeah, you're, you're always late. To be a time mage, I don't understand why you're always late. Listen to me when I say this. If you're losing over and over again with your homebrew, it's probably because it sucks. Crash. I mean, seriously, that's really the truth of it. I mean, if you're not doing well with your homebrew, then it's probably because it's not a good build. It's it's probably needs to be scrapped. It probably needs, you need to go back to the drawing board. I mean, I do it all the time. I brew decks up all the time, almost on a daily basis. And I think I'm qualified to say this because, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, I'm probably one of the best homebrewers in on the whole planet. I mean, I'm just, you know, just being honest. And if I'm playing with a deck that I put together that's not doing well, I think to myself, maybe I need to scrap this, maybe I need to tweak it. But I don't blame other people. I don't blame the people playing the net decks, the people that's playing the meta decks. I don't blame somebody else. And that's the problem that I see with a lot of homebrewers. Yeah, they want to play something original. They want to play something that they created. But you have to keep in mind, you got to study the meta. You got to know what the meta's doing. You got to know what people, what decks people are playing. And you got to build your brews according to what's happening in the meta so that you can beat what's going on in the meta. You can't just take three cards that do something cool, some crazy combo and try to build a deck around them and think that everybody's going to let you get that combo off. I just want to get my combo off. I, I, I just I just want to win. What is the person playing the net deck supposed to do? Is he supposed to let you assemble your three to four card combo and win? No, he or she is playing to win. So they're going to try their best to beat you. That's the name of the game. They're not supposed to let you do whatever this crazy concoction is that you put together. They don't want to let you do what it is you're trying to do. And I think that's where people get upset. They get upset because they put together this crazy combo deck or this crazy homebrew that does something cool and they want to be able to get it off and they get mad when the other person is playing in that deck that's stopping their deck from doing what it is that they want to do and that's the issue so majority of the times it just boils down to if you're going to play homebrew you got to play a homebrew that is built good i say it all the time there's good jank and there's bad jank if you're playing bad jank you can't blame somebody else for playing the net deck and beating you because as a competent home brewer, you have the advantage. You already know what your opponent is playing. You already know what that deck is. If you're doing your due diligence and studying the meta, staying up on what's going on, and if you're competent, you can build a good homebrew and go and compete at a high level if the pieces are there, because sometimes the pieces just aren't there. You can't try to force a deck to be good in a meta that it's not built to be good in. You have to be mindful of what cards are available to you and what's going on in the meta. Build your homebrews based on that. Build your homebrews to win, not just to do something cool and hope that you get it off 
once in 20 games, but be mad when you lose all of the other 19 games. If you're building something super jank, then intend for it to only be casual, because if you try to take it to a high level competition, there's no way that you're going to win consistently against people playing decks that are dialed in to play at a high level deal. Those decks are designed to compete at a high level. Your deck is designed to do something cool that you're just trying to get off just to be original. So unoriginal. What are your feelings on net decking versus home brewing? In the comments, let me know. Comment down below. Like this video. If you don't like what I'm saying, then go ahead and unlike this video. Do whatever you feel like you want to do, but let me know. And let me know if there's something that you want to know what the stacks think about it. As always, I appreciate all the support and I'll see you guys next time.